by the way, it's not about the service. I just had that burden in my heart to just say that. Amen. Today I want to isolate a topic. You might like it, you might not like it. It doesn't matter. Amen. <laughs> I said amen. amen. <laughs> Who is ready? It's Bible study again. <laughs> So on Sunday we started what the economics of relationships, right? So we started looking at the things that should be given or invested in abundant quality and the ones that should be given at all, um, scarcely or not even at all. So we looked at what? Second one, romance, thought, money. I think we stopped there. All right. So attention. So I said nobody is too broke to afford attention. You can pay attention. <laughs> amen. I said amen. amen. Um, I think I remember I was in primary school. There was one exam I took. It was about what um, antonyms, synonyms, something like that. I was looking for the similar word when the question actually said the opposite I came out left to me, I've answered everything correctly only to discover that I didn't read the instruction on the paper it's a Nigerian team they post a program on social media at date, venue, time somebody will ask where is this meeting taking place? Some will even post. I would have loved to come, but transport. When it is vividly there, you can watch online. <laughs> Attention. It starts from those little things. True or not true? I say it starts from those little things. True or not true? Yeah. Ah. Today, I want to isolate a mother topic under that discussion. So I want to talk about sex and the unmarried. Amen. So let's lay very important foundation. Amen. So we can go far. I'm going to be as raw as possible just so you know. And I'm going to be as um, um, as blunt as possible because it is the will of God. Amen. Alright, so the subject in itself should not have been necessary even though that it is possible. Are you following what I'm saying? On a normal note, you should not have any reason to discuss sex. I'm not saying sex education now. I'm talking about sex among your married. There is no aspect on your mind that you are thinking, oh, pastor will not touch it. There is no aspect we won't touch. Just so you know. Let's start. You will see. Everybody, born again, not born again, tongue speaking, not tongue speaking, look forward to it. True or not true? Even you, but it's true. Alright? So, the desire for sex in itself is natural. It is not a crime. Do you get what I'm saying? I want to help open many things up so you can understand. So, I want to say this basically and fundamentally. Sex in itself is godly. Sex in itself is holy. In itself, it's godly. And it is what? Holy. And it is very interesting. Very nice. Fantastic. 
cocastic. I don't know the Hebrew meaning for that one. But if I say cocastic, just put it there. Uh-huh. We have some pastors there. So, in itself, it is a beautiful thing designed by God. Alright? For many reasons. Number one, to tame the appetite. Because everybody has it. It is the kind of food God has designed for you to eat and you won't feel guilty. Do you get what I'm saying? Some of you don't know how to look at me now. <laughs> if I look this way, we say this way. Okay. Just look unto Jesus. So, in itself, very holy. But you see, God by nature has designed it in such a way that there will always be things placed around us um, to how will I put this now? As beautiful as the Garden of Eden was, as fantastic as that garden was, there was, there was a tree in the middle. You know about that tree, right? That man should not eat of. The idea of that is that man should prove his love for God by not touching it. So, there is always a divinely designated portion. That the reason why that portion is there is not for us to fall into that trap, but for us to avoid it, thereby proving our love to God. Sex in itself is designed to be enjoyed within the confines of marriage. It is only within that confine that it is holy. Outside that confine, it is not. I'm going to show you scriptures, but I want to first start basically. Do you get what I'm saying? So, let me, let's deal with a certain issue. Alright? Um, let's deal with a certain issue. Someone says, um, Pastor, you know, what if the both of us have agreed that we are going to end up getting married? Well, the answer to that is that you are not married until you are married. Let me say it again and again. You are not married until you are... Say it one more time. You are not married until you are married. Alright? The idea is this. All the things that God has designed for us to enjoy and the things that He has instructed for us not to enjoy... The only way for us to live the kind of life He wants us to live, the quality and the quantity, is for us to stay within the boundary. If you don't know what lack of trust will look like, let me, ladies, can I quickly educate you for a minute? Let me educate you. You get into a relationship with a guy, and... Um, you say we are going to get married. We're going to get married. Ah, that thing is doing me one kind. It's doing me this, this. You know. Thank God. But this is it. The moment you open yourself to a man, it doesn't matter how spiritual that man is. The next question on his mind is, is this how she has been opening herself to all others also? That's the next question. I can't start you know there was a time we had a meeting that the man of God came to minister and said the Holy Ghost told him that there are many virgins in that meeting and they should come out so they can be prayed for I know some of you are saying thank God I wasn't there <laughs> but of course we, we won't take that All right, it's everybody's private affair so we had to stop that what am I trying to drive at? I wish I can tell people to come and share their experience. That the moment you begin to compromise that reality, the next thought on the mind of the guy is, is this how cheap she is? So, the Bible made it clear that you should not be a lady of easy virtue. I'm going to go to all those areas. But understand that the only way for you to enjoy, understanding that relationship is the foundation for what the marriage will look like. And if you want it to look like what God has in his mind, the only way for it to look like that, the, I'm not saying one of the ways, the only way is for you to play according to the rules. 
the only way. The issue is this. Many think they can cheat this system. It's a system. And it is complete on its own. The moment, the moment you break the head, you give room for a serpent. It is a complete system. So, someone, let me give you, please pay attention. Someone says that we're in a relationship, alright, the issue we've been having, we've not been able to control ourselves. Once you start it once, you can't stop it. That is a very basic thing. You can't stop it by yourself. You are with a spouse. You are not married. You've started seeing each other's nakedness. You cannot stop it. It doesn't matter. Both of you should put yourself together. Go to different mountains around the world. Agree together. After that prayer, you are going to go back to it. Because certain things, the mystery behind them, the grip it has over your soul, it is beyond you. And that's why God has placed men as watchers over your soul. Alright? When I see that, the first thing I do, I separate the two people. But you know, when two people want to enjoy sin, the major enemy they have is the pastor. Do you get what I'm saying? It's a very painful reality. Because by the time the whole thing goes south, the last resort is still who? The pastor. So, the work of a pastor is a work that can only be rewarded by God. Somebody says, when we are going to end up getting married, the journey to the marriage is still only God knows when. Only God knows whether it will work or not. All right? Already they are coming to see each other at night. The girl will sleep over. They off each other's clothes, do certain things together. The girl will go back. The guy goes back. She misses her period. Tell her to use certain drugs. All right? She keeps doing that for him. The woman with the intention of keeping him at all costs. But the guy, by nature, not nature in Christ, nature in the flesh, a lover of variety, already something is ringing in his body. Can't it be sweeter than this? Can't that be better? Do you get what I'm saying now? A man who cheats with you on God will cheat on you with somebody else. Are you following what I'm saying? Listen to me. You are not married, you are sleeping together. It is not just fornication, it is cheating. And you are cheating on God. And when you lay that basic foundation, it will cheat on you. You can't stop it. You have started the process. So, when I see people bring case of adultery in marriage, I used to ask them. When, before you guys got married, because for a building to stand, there has to be a foundation. Who laid this foundation? And I've, nobody gives a pastor a dick when it comes to dealing with two young people about relationship matter like the girl. Many guys would have been helped in their life if not for the dangerous girls they have around. The one who believe I can help him solve this problem. Uh, you know, with me by side. You are going to burn your hands. So, the moment you, both of you, start sleeping together, you are building something. You have started laying a foundation. And when you lay that foundation, it definitely, the devil will let you build on it. A master, a masterpiece. The proof of love is not taking a woman to the bed. It is taking her to the altar. Do you get what I'm saying now? I, I, I mean, we, we were discussing something. We, so, somebody commented on our Facebook page. We posted a picture. We went for a friend's name and ceremony. And somebody commented and said, she looks pregnant. When did you guys get married? <sighs> Follow me. Listen. The fellow commented on my Instagram, commented on my Facebook, commented on my wife's Facebook. So the fellow went to create a special Facebook page just for that comment. Now, you can't blame people. Anywhere we get to, we have uninvited audience watching if we are living by what we preach. I think I shared the story with you. Let me share this story again. Time I went to minister um, somewhere in the north, and I, I was counseling a young lady. Um, okay, who? And I'm not saying I'm not sharing this story for stigmatization. Please understand me. Um, you know, because we're in a very fragile world. 
Are you following what I'm saying now? All right, we're in a very fragile world. So, um, this lady was HIV positive and then she was in a relationship with a guy who obviously was negative, a sexual purity advocate. So, um, when she was talking to me about the fact that she was HIV positive, all right, I, uh, the next thing on my mind is that, um, you see, you have to open up to this guy. All right, both of you should talk together. If, you, if there's a way you love each other so much, you can make that work. All right, I don't, it's not my own duty. I'm not your pastor. I'm just a pastor who came around to preach. So, both of you should agree. Talk to each other about this. But I was led to ask her, have you guys been sleeping together? And so she said, eh, actually, actually, we've not been able to refrain from each other. I said to her, um, okay, you guys have been having unprotected sex. She said, yes, unprotected. All right, because um, I just love him. I can't hold myself. You love him so much, you are willing to bring him down. Are you following what I'm saying here? What I'm trying to bring out is that the natural human love has no capacity to achieve what God has in his mind. It doesn't matter how much. I, I love, I was on that Pasek Coca on Sunday and was saying this. It doesn't matter how much the wine of your relationship is shocking. You know that point where I can't do without you. I can't, it doesn't matter how much that wine is. It will always finish. And it takes the one that God releases to sustain the home. Are you following what I'm saying now? So natural human love in itself can be destructive. Except God takes you on a journey to show you how to love. There are people who don't know how to love, but they are in love. It's a very dangerous thing. It's a very dangerous thing. In the sense that by the time this fellow loves you, the next thing on this fellow's mind is how to explore your body, how to um, see what, you know, touching this aspect of your body, how does it look like? If I grab her this way, if I grab him, how does it look like? It is a kind of desire that seeks to gratify only your need. Natural human love only gratifies your need. But you see, the love that comes from God is not self-seeking. It is not about you. You, you don't think of messing somebody up, then, you know, as long as you are sexually satisfied. Are you following what I'm saying here? So, I hope to be able to help lay proper foundation on this subject matter because I pray, I pray that God will help our hearts and minds in the name of Jesus. Now, let me take you, alright, journey into scriptures. So, we are going to stay on different scriptures. First and foremost, let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter number 31. Let's go to Proverbs chapter number 31. Let's see what the Bible is saying there. Proverbs 31. If you are there, say amen. I wait for those who are not there. Proverbs chapter number 31. Alright, look at it. I start reading from verse 1. The words of King Lamuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What, my son, and what, the son of my womb? And what the son of my vows? Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroys kings. Now, look up here. In the confines of marriage, sex is not giving your strength. Have you, do you remember that when Jacob was blessing all his children and he looked at Reuben, he said, Reuben, my firstborn, the, the, my, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity. But he now said to him that he would not excel. Alright, because of wrong appropriation of sexual urge. Are you following what I'm saying? So, within the confines of marriage, it is a good way to yield your strength. But outside the confines, it is a strange thing. And a very dangerous thing. Give not your strength to women. He didn't say to your wife. To women. Nor your ways to that which destroys kings. What is the Bible trying to say here? Sexual intercourse. Outside the confines of covenant is trading of strength. 
In the case of something, a physical air was caught. But in the case of every believer, something is still being trimmed off. It is called strength. The significance of the hair of something that was plugged was the strength. Are you following what I'm saying here? What is the meaning of the word strength there? It is the word vitality. Can we have the scripture from Amplified Translation? I'm not sure Amplified uses that word vitality. Let's have Amplified and let's have Message Translation. Proverbs 31 verse 3. Alright, that's okay. Let me read Amplified. Proverbs 31 3. Alright. Give not your strength to lose women. Ladies, say I will not be a lose woman. Say loud and clear. Know your ways to those who are that which ruin and destroy things. Give me a message translation. Huh. Don't despise your what? Huh? Huh? Do you know what that means? Huh? Let me give you a word. When they say somebody is potent, the word potent means functional. So, he said, don't dissipate the functional part of your life on fortune hunting women. Nobody wakes up in the morning to become a fortune hunting woman. But as long as you don't know how to say no to a man who has not placed a ring on your finger, you are fortune hunting. You don't have to be intentional about hunting it. As long as something is going to be lost inside of you, you are hunting it. Do not dissipate your virality on fortune hunting women. Look at the word. To miscause women who shipwreck leaders. So, you say I love him. What is the best way to love him? Zip up. If he leaves you because you are not ready to unloose your pants for him, you have made a mark in his life. You have left a statement. At least he knows that women like that exist. If he has made a decision to shipwreck his own life, you have decided I will not be a fortunate in woman. Can I tell you the truth that there are Christians that are ready to break up with you because you didn't open your pants? And some of them can actually be pastors. Promiscuous women who shipwreck leaders. Okay. Let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter number 5. Proverbs 5. If you are there, say Amen. Now hear me. Let's look. Um, <clears throat> let's start the reading from verse 7. Proverbs 5 verse 7. Go back to, um, um, to King James translation. Proverbs 5 7. Thank you. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. I love the word remove your ways. Listen, please listen to me. If you are a man, hear me now, listen. You notice that there is a lady that whenever you see her, the sexual part of you is called. If she talks to you for two minutes, you notice that there are a lot of notable changes in your body. It is not a time to conclude that the girl is a witch. Or she's what names do we give to ladies like that? Huh? Maybe she's possessed. That's not the time to conclude. It's a two way thing. Number one, it shows that 
you are very vulnerable. It shows that the guard over your soul is not yet strong. So, there is a personal weakness. Here, one. Number two, it shows that it is possible for an individual to be carrying the spirit of lust and they don't know. Let me explain. If you give yourself to an activity again and again, a spirit seems to take charge. Spirit pay attention to consistency. Spirit pay attention to repetitions. Spirit pay attention to repetition. I shared this story with you. My own personal story of um, when I was still in Kano. The young lady that um, I was entering the market to get some groceries for the family and I saw that young lady. I mean, I was looking back more than five times. There was just something about her that was, it was like a pool. When you have somebody around you that seems to have such pool on your soul, remove your ways from her ways. Somebody says that I have somebody in my house, a lady. It's like I keep holding myself back there. It's like I can't control myself around her. What should I do? I say, number one, consider her your enemy. Say, but we are not fighting. You are fighting. It is a fight that cannot be seen with the physical eyes. You can't be nice around people that draws your sexual desires. Don't be kind to them. What does the Bible say you do? Flee. It is not a battle you can win when you stay. You can't win it if you stay. Fleeing many times will mean blocking them. Say, is it this serious? Is it that serious? It is better to be misunderstood than to fall. You block them. You say, why are you blocking them? Why can't you just, you know, some Christians say, all these things this pastor is teaching people. When will they become strong? When will they, when will they? The strongest of all strong said, my strategy for this battle is that you run. The Lord of hosts himself said that. Nobody can be wiser in the face of that than God. Do you get what I'm saying? So, how do I deal with this? I have this neighbor. Oh my God. When she passes, flee. One of the reasons people fall into immorality is that they are trying to be kind around people that have a pool over their souls. That's not the time to be kind. I shared something with you of a young girl that was going to the office of a pastor to see the pastor. A priest actually. A, a, okay, church, a pastor. And she wore a gown. The pastor's wife had cited her from the mission house. Women know each other. And that's why if you are a man you want to last, listen to your wife. Don't say she's always suspicious. Listen to her. You'll live longer. We have many grandmas more than we have grandpas. The reason many grandpas are out of the road because they didn't listen to their wives. Listen. Don't say I didn't tell you. The pastor's wife was watching the girl as she was coming. Then she knew there was trouble. As the girl entered the office of the pastor, she unzipped her clothes. And behold, she wasn't wearing anything on that. She was just there. As she did that, she heard a big slap landing on her cheeks. It was the pastor's wife. Then what happened? The pastor was able to get up. I will beat you! I... But for a woman that had foresight, for a woman that could see what the man couldn't see, do you get what I'm saying? Yes. Many of you are claiming the girl that you were misbehaving with before you got married to her is now suspecting you. She knew the things you are capable of. So when this girl is looking at you and saying, be careful, she knows what she's talking about. 
Nobody is too big to fall. Remove your way far from her and come not nigh the door of her house. Don't go and borrow pressing iron from her. Don't go and tell her I need your iPhone charger. Not around 12 o'clock. Don't tell her, do you have Netflix or something? Don't go near the door of her house. When you go there, you will enter. Are you following what I'm saying here? You say, this, the Bible can't be old school. You may say men have old school ordinances. This is the Bible. This is God talking here. Alright? Don't go near the door of a house. What verse are we? Verse 9 now. Look at it. Lest you give your honor to others and your years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with your wealth and your labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Look at the regret of those who fail to listen to this kind of teaching. And say, how have I hated, verse 12, how have I hated instruction? And what? How have I, it didn't say how have I hated advice. What people battle with when it comes to this area is not counsel, it is instruction. Separate is an instruction, not an advice. Let me say this to you. And listen to me. God does not break order. If you are messing yourselves up sexually, your pastor says separate, you say you can fight it, you will destroy each other. They will join you together in the presence of God and the same God will watch you. Why? He's a lover of ordinances. Though hand be joined in a hand, no sinner will go and punish. You need to ask yourself, the decisions you are making with your spouse now, do you think God will want to use your success? If you are successful with the things you are doing with your spouse, what lesson do you think God wants to use that to teach the body of Christ? No, hold on. Ask yourself. If you are misbehaving, you are hearing me now. At the end of the day, God still... Okay, you see, God wants... God is going to teach the, the issue of mercy. So everybody can mess themselves up and then just enjoy mercy. Abort as many times as possible. Do all the junk. Time. You get what I'm saying now? Who are those that will be a witness of serving a righteous God righteously in these perverse times? So you need to ask yourself. If God keeps blessing me and promoting me with all these terrible things I'm doing, relationship, one of the worst ones is to have, listen to me, if you are in a relationship and you can't hold back from each other, be accountable. Run! Run! Run to meet those who are accountable. Please, sir, we are dying. We need help. Things are not the way you think, sir. Actually, the both of us, this, this has been happening. We need help. Now, it takes... Nobody can do that except the both parties will agree. Right? And usually, the one who usually disagree is the one who has image but no integrity. The one that the pastor, the one to go and report to, sees as somebody. Usually, it is the one who is broken that will say, let's go and do this. And it is the one who is saying no that is going to bring destruction upon that relationship. So, don't say I do to somebody who doesn't fear God. Who would rather keep their ego than fearing God. The dangerous journey to go on. The very dangerous journey. You see, and they will say, How have I hated instruction? They love counsels, but they hate instructions. They hate instruction. We are about entering into the month of March. Only God knows the number of babies that will be flushed down the toilet because of the joy of Valentine in quotes. You know, it is possible to have somebody who is listening to be a Christian born again, tongues, tongue speaking. It's difficult to use the word born again in this kind of scenario. Who is listening to me right now? All right? But at the same time, all these things, they are actually found in your life. Very, it's a very serious issue. We were 2019, we were holding a meeting. Um, prayer towards Latari. 
were in church. Youth were there, workers. People traveled down from different parts. They were there for that conference. We were praying. It was a conference we were praying for Holy Ghost to fall in the meeting and all that. But while we were praying, the Lord gave me a word. said, there's somebody here who have been involved in abortion a few times. Alright? And then you are about to do something else. The Lord said to tell you, if you don't desist, I've forgotten that word particularly. This one will not go. The reason why people hear such prophecy and they still fall into it is that they fall in too much to arise on their own. The grip of immorality is stronger than you think. The only way out is to cry for help. Go on mountain, pray. You know, you can go on mountain to see God for 40 days because you are arrogant. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. You can go on the mountain to see God for 40 days. The reason you are climbing on that mountain is because you are arrogant. Some will even prefer to look for a pastor who don't know their history. Just to, somewhere they will confess without consequence. It is like going to meet a doctor to treat you who doesn't know your medical history. They will treat you with the kind of drugs that somebody like you should not take. You don't understand what I'm saying. People try to package their ego, package their pride. Why? They hate instruction. They despise reproof. They hate instruction. They hate instruction. Though hand be joined in hand, no sinner will go unpunished. You look around, you look at the house of... And I, I need to really say this. It is what you make out of a woman that she becomes. It is what you make out of a woman that she becomes. Many of you envy so many homes of ministers of God, of great people. Oh, you look at their homes and say, oh, beautiful one. But God is also giving you the opportunity to do something better or similar with yours. Whatever you see in people's life that you are enjoying, celebrating God and thanking God for, is a product of what the decisions they have what made. So, somebody is praying with his own fiancé. You are buying good cycle every day with your own. And then, after you have bought one pack, you still come to tell this uh, girl, you should not forget that you have a call to ministry. Alright? Then, the days you have come to church, pastor have talked to you, you are now so much on fire, you go back home and you are threatening her will break up. Who brought her to that level? That's the function of the leader. You are a man that should lead her into a form of life. Or you are leading her, you are leading her astray. Once in a while when you are on fire, you now make her look like a devil. You come to a pastor, talk about your fiancé like he's from the pit of hell. But in the days that you are in your own garment, you are the one who pushes her to do all those things. Many young ladies are crying. They are, be- they are crying, they are pained. About the kind of guy they are involved with. But they can't speak out. But I beseech you by the mercies of God. Cry out. If a guy breaks, out with, breaks up with you because you are accountable. That's a dangerous boy. If he breaks up with you, congratulations. There are relationships that must not work out. And many of you are busy trying to make them work. It is important for the sake of you. For the sake of your mental health. For the sake of your unborn children, it is important this fellow breaks up with you. And many of you are too blindly in love to let go. Any love that can be paused is not from God. See, I want to pause this relationship. He said, I'm going to die. Now that's not the God kind of love. Because the God kind of love can wait. What kind of chat do you have with your with your your fiance or fiance? See, as you were talking to me the other time, I just feel wet. Who poured water on your body? <laughs> you guys are looking at me straight like I don't know. I know what I'm talking about. I know. I know. You can't confuse me. I know what I'm saying. I can't wait to have you. 
I can't wait to this. Can we do video call? Can you show me just a glimpse? A glimpse of what? <laughs> Many of you are laughing. But God between us knows you are guilty of these things. Yeah, you are, you are, when, when, I don't know when next I'm going to set my eyes on you again. You are, you are traveling now. Ah, four months. Four months is a long time. Oh, I just feel you are doing this to me. Doing what? What are you doing? You are stirring up something in your own soul. The day you meet, you can't hold each other back from each other. Because you have planted the seed long enough. It will germinate. It will bring forth death. Oh, I can't, I can't just wait for you to hold me like this. You are teaching that guy. You are teaching him that you are a girl of easy virtue. So, he says, can you just snap a part of your body? Then you take your phone and say, make sure you delete it right away. Okay. So, are you aware that nothing really gets deleted from social media? Nothing. There was a time I took a Christian's phone I just put it as a Christian's phone. I, I, something was on my phone. This is about three, four years ago. So I was going to use that phone for a while. So, amongst the pictures, the WhatsApp sent, I, as, I, I just stumbled on one. Bear chested. I said, Jesus Christ. So, the things that many people are doing in the corner of their room, only God can help. Many are not fine. They just look fine. They are terribly sick. Many people are in trouble. We are having issues of fellowship presidents chatting with different girls in the fellowship. We still come to the same place and preach. Hold the microphone. Talking to the same people you are messing up. And they have the God. They will do deliverance, laying on of us, and still learn and impact those same girls. And after the whole meeting, they come back with their phone, chatting them up, saying all the stuff, and saying the other time as you were falling, I was looking at your backside and I feel one kind. Yes, are you following? These are the dangerous things people are doing. It is amazing how the devil has stabbed a lot of conscience. And then they land themselves in troubles that are bigger than them. It looks like God is not answering prayers. Sometimes a pastor is busy sweating and saying, God, answer this fellow. But this fellow is eating the seed of something they planted yesterday. God cannot be mocked. What a man sows, he will reap. Oh, I just wish we were married now. No, you are not married. That ends the case. And to worsen the case, some have, they have the God. So even do it with random girls. Can I know you more? I say, okay. My name is Baramosi. Can I know you more and more? My son's name is Agbabiaka. More. I went to Susu and Su International School. I say. Uh, you know, what's your sexual life like? Is this not the progression? Let me say this to you. This is my mobile phone. I have over 200 screenshots of messages between brothers and sisters. So, there was a time a young man was sitting in front of me. He was chatting a girl. She's a daughter. As he was chatting, he was in front of me. I was counseling them. She was sending me the odd, fresh voice. Um, what's it called? Screenshot of the thing he was saying. And I was saying, hey, Moji. Say, hey, Papa. <laughs> and I was looking at him. Did you get what I'm saying? What are the things people get themselves involved in today? They call some sex thing. Huh? They are ability to take each other on sexual journey via the phone. 
And these things are very addicting. They hold people down, glue them longer than they ever want to stay. I called a guy. A girl cried out. I don't want to mention the school. And said that she's tired. She wants to leave her fellowship. Because her fellowship president is not letting her rest. She says she wants to leave. And she doesn't know what to do. So, I said, what do you mean? So she began to explain the kind of um, stuff that she has been she has been involved with her fellowship president. So, she said um, he just comes around and then just begins to make those demands. And then, you know, and all those things. So I said, whenever he's around again, and just let us know. I mean, so one of those days he called. Um, and she was using a name for him. He said, Papa. Papa is around again. Right. The guy will leave from campus. And then journey down to the girl's house off campus. This was a worker in the same fellowship where you are pastoring people. Leading them to pray in tongues and all form of things. So the girl called. We got there. And then we met the man of God. He said, eh, Another one, I got a report from fellowship members who one of the guys that knew that the pastor was messing up with the girl. You, you can't do these things and say people should not know. The only thing the world would not know is what has not been done. Hmm? That's the truth. So, say, uh, they have been, so I called the guy. I said, come and see. So he came to my house. I served him malt and then got some meat pie. I said, man of God, eat. I, I vacated my own chair where I was seated. So I sat on the plastic chair. He was rolling and rolling and swinging himself on the chair. He was swinging himself. I have left school years before he even got to school. So he was just swinging. So when, when I saw he was enjoying, I was asking about ministry. He was excitedly talking to me about ministry, about encounters. He was revving me up. Right, so, I brought up the matter. I said, there's this case I want to talk to you about. And I, I said, I brought up the issue of the girl. Normally, under that kind of atmosphere, when you bring such matter, the guy becomes shocked. But in this case, as I mentioned the matter, he busted into laughter. I said, ah. I said, no, we, we prayed. We've talked, we've talked about it. We've prayed. We've prayed. He said, that's even the, then he began to mention the one that their own senior pastor is doing. Now, the senior pastor... Alright, he's a papa in the fellowship. No pastor is another senior papa. So he was with one girl. That was with his fiancée and then two other girls. That's why I have so much fear for young ministries that has no supervision. A man who has not been pastored should not pastor anybody. It's true. true. Let me say this to you. There's something about being released to ministry. It is different from escaping. Being released is that we have watched you. That you are full of, full of the spirit, wisdom, and the Holy Ghost. We can endorse you. We will misbehave. Let them hold us. Many who were never pastored are busy creating churches up and down, starting ministries. Injured. Many young ladies in the body of Christ are injured. If you call all girls and call those who have been served by pastors, it will shock you of the injuries that lies under the carpet in the body of Christ. But what do we say? Pastors always win. Why? When you call people and begin to rebuke them, they say you are fighting against the body of Christ. Does the Bible not say that the foundation of God's throne is righteousness and justice? What is justice? Anyone that sinned should bear the consequence. I was shocked. I could not talk to him again. Of how this guy was taken lightly, messing up God's child. And he said, we have talked to God about it. So he began also to mention about how their papa. Are you seeing now? Particularly those of you who are hearing now, who believe that there is a call upon your life? You, you, a man of God is not messing up. You are holding people here and there not to misbehave. Imagine what will happen when they can now see that papa is doing the same thing. So when you hear of places where the minister of God is misbehaving, it will shock you. The number of matters also that are going on, licensed by the misbehavior of the pastor.
It will shock us that when Jesus comes, the number of those we think are there that are not there. The number of people we think we are assuming. People who have concluded they are the height of what it looks to be holy. What it looks to be righteous. And the kind of worms have been revealed. And I, I need to quickly warn somebody who is hearing me. You are listening to me this evening. And you can, you, you can look at your life. You are, you are seeing that these things are there. The, the, the devil will be telling you right now. You can deal with it on your own. It's a lie. You have tried for the past five years. You have not succeeded. You won't still succeed. Cry out. And that's why he's talking about correction in that place. Because there's instruction. There are instructions. Many people need to stop ministry. Not pause. Stop. Close down all the social media parts. Don't pause. So close it down. The foundation is already bent. Eh? You will have an adage. Say, I'm okay. One level where we're looking. Then where we're selling. You are, you are building. Everything is already haphazardly. Many, some people need to be instructed. But they ate the instructions and the instructors. That's why when I hear people saying some things about the people who have pastored them before, I'm not quick to believe. You get what I'm saying? History. You, you give people... Are you following what I'm saying here? Instruction. Go back to that Proverbs 5. And say I have hated instruction and my heart has despised people. Give me this same verse 12. Message translation. Verse 12, message translation, quickly. Verse 12, yes. Saying, oh, why didn't I do what they told me? Why did I do what they told me? Why did I reject a disciplined life? When they told me, sit down there, why didn't I do it? I was ministering in a church here in Ibadan on Saturday. I was talking to their workers. I was called to come and hold the teaching for their workers' retreat. And I was telling them about the mistakes that workers make in the body of Christ. And I said, one of the mistakes is rebellion. The second one that looks like it is partnership with the rebellious. Somebody is misbehaving. Then you start finding moral support in the life of those who have also misbehaved and left. You say, I hate instruction. Why didn't I do? Why did I reject a disciplined life? Nobody can get better simply by fasting and praying. There are things that need to be cut off. You get what I'm saying now? So that it's just like somebody that has cancer. You get what I'm saying now? You look at the organs that have been severed by the cancer. You say, this part, this one, it doesn't matter the number of chemotherapy you take. This one needs to be cut off. Disciplined life. Alright, go back to um, King James translation then. Give me verse 13. Let's continue from verse 13. Quickly. And I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregational assembly. 15. <laughs> Now, this is a very serious one. Drink waters out of thine own Christian. And running waters out of your own well. The fellow you are not married to is not your well. It is somebody else's well. If all your exes are engaged with people that are around you, what message, what story do they have to say about you? Let's assume that as we are talking now, right now in this same service, two or three out of your exes just decide to walk to the altar. And they say, we have something to say about somebody here. Drink water out of your own crystal. And what, running water out of your own well. I mean, wait to dig your own first. Okay? Lest your fountains be dispersed abroad. And rivers of water in the street. Huh? Children who are not even up to you will now begin to say, yeah, that one. Have you seen where people, are money, where people are mocking somebody who is involved in sexual immorality? Say, that one. That's the one you are respecting. 
uh, you don't even know his story. Don't let your fountains be dispersed away abroad. Go to verse 17. Let them be only your own and not for strangers with you. Yes? Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice. Rejoice with the wife of your youth. Rejoice with the wife of your youth. Rejoice with the wife of your youth. Let me say this to you. If you don't learn to tame your appetite now, marriage does not solve anybody's sexual problem. Marriage will only make it more obvious. I'm telling you. It's the truth. Uh, that you are married does not mean you will not be attracted to other people. But you forcefully, you don't just shut your antenna, you break it. This is what the Lord has given. This is my own will. There is nothing that God wants me to enjoy anywhere as far as women or woman is concerned. He has placed everything in a woman and he has blessed me with that. That is my own will. And I should be content. Who, who can finish the water in a well? So, that somebody say that my wife cannot satisfy me is a sign that the fellow is problematic. Do you get what I'm saying now? That's the truth. So, you need to start building it now. Building that discipline. I'm not you want to have a kind of life. You know, ladies, are you following what I'm saying now? The reason why I'm following you and I'm talking to you now, it looks like I'm attacking you, is because you are the one who don't allow these men change. I make bold to say what year are we now? So this is my 11th year of pastoring people. 11th year. I make bold to say. When you get to the point that you want to help a young man, the one who will say, if, if I let him go, who, who, how, how will I marry? Is the lady. She's the one who, the guy should be separated and helped. This fellow is not normal. He's not fine. If you allow this guy marry this girl, he's going to give us attack and kill her. But the girl who will be killed is the one who will say, kill me now. So, usually you guys are the ones that have the kind of love that can't let go. Sometimes these guys don't even love you to that point that they will not even let you go. I make bold to tell you this. Sometimes they don't love, if they were the ones in your truth, they will release you. You hear what I'm saying? Because as far as they are concerned, they love varieties. But you are the one who keeps thinking, who will marry me this way? And after I've done so many things with him, after this one, who will listen to my story and still marry me? If somebody is injured, let them be treated. If part of the treatment requires that they will separate from you, let them be separated from you. And I'm saying this. Everyone stand as a witness before us that you have a pastor who taught you. And that's why I said, you get what I'm saying? I bless God for the way church is increasing. We bless God for the number of services. But do you know, deep in my soul, that's why we have the third service. Deep in my soul, I'm not, I, I am not carried away by the crowd. The crowd, the crowd does not help pastoring. When it comes to pastoring, it is, it is, pastoring is more traditional than just a crowd thing. Church is not a party. So, we bless God for the crowd coming. But you see, there is still a grassroots work, root work. Until that work is done, people have a church, they don't have a pastor. The grassroots work is that the pastor knows you. He knows you by name. So, when I see people come to me and say, I'm relationship, I say, I don't know your spouse. I don't know your spouse. There are many of you here, I don't know your spouse. I've never met them before. Whether you are hiding them from me or not, I don't know. Many of you are careful. If I bring this to come and see pastor, this man may go directly to the issue we are having. Let him go. That is the doctor over your soul. And these are very serious matters in the body of Christ. People are hiding all over. Under the umbrella of large assembly. Everybody comes dressed. Snap pictures. Put on Snapchat. On Instagram. Oh, our church is this and that. They know they have a church, but they don't have a pastor. Two hours in church. Everybody dance. Oh, yeah, come on and do all those things. When it's time for the world, oh, <laughs> and they leave. Many of them will even sleep two hours. But Sunday service has looked like a day of competition of clothes. 
You get what I'm saying? So it's about who wears this kind of clothes or who wears that kind of clothes. And people come to church and they are all fast. They are fascinated. They are dancing and doing all those things. As long as nobody touches their weakness, they are happy. But when they get to places where they, we begin to investigate them, they say, and this church, they are wala, it's even too much. You know, there was a time I began to feel they have an issue with my pastoring system. Because I don't like to know people on the surface. Can we dig deep? What do we find? Hey, I just want to come and pray for you. Nobody should investigate. You should have a life that can be investigated. It's a very serious issue for the body of Christ. So while I bless God for the church growth all over the world and the things happening, my heart still beats. Because a lot of snakes and scorpions are hiding under these umbrellas. Ah, kidnappers don't go into church. Talk to me now. Huh? Yes, kidnappers pay tight. Big alert is entering. We don't know the work this fellow is doing. We, don't, we can't tell. Somebody came to church, a young man dropped a seed of 24 million naira. Excuse me, sir. Did you get any federal government contract? He said, no. Okay, what, 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 what do you do? He said, I'm just a, I'm just a, a small boy with big God. Ah. I was ministering in year 2011. Listen to me. Ministering in year 2011 in church. A young man came to me in church and said, um, Pastor, I've shared this story with you before. Pastor, while you were ministering, I just, I, I shared strongly in my heart. You know, I've been, I've been involved in internet fraud. I've been stealing money from people. It was into Yahoo. So I, I just sensed strongly in my heart that I should come and sow the money into your account. And then I should not do all those things. For. So you, you've not sensed in your heart that God needs your soul. Or you are sensing your heart to give me the money you got illegally. You know, many of you have collected money that you took that money in exchange for your calling. It was when he was telling me that story, as at that day, I didn't have transport to go back home. May we have pastors that can see your money perish with you. And we need to start having pastors that will show to people that the way to their heart is not the seed anybody brings. It is your love for Jesus. When you love Jesus more, you become more dear to my heart. Not that nobody can buy their way to a pastor's heart through seeds and say, eh, eh, eh. No! Bring meat that are fit for repentance. Not, not material things. Meat fit for repentance. Something that shows that God is doing a work in your life. This is the reason why we are here. So we can have a whole bunch of people, the whole church is filled up on Sundays. People are around the corridor. They are, they are waiting for a second service. Waiting for all that. And yet people are still dying. We are not here to say we are a fast growing church. Who cares about all those nonsense? When Jesus comes, we want to appear before him with souls. Mature believers. Well, what is the issue? We have a church of 1,000 people. But when it, comes, when it comes to talking about soldiers of Christ, we have less than 10. What advantage is that? 1%. Is that 1%? Yeah, 1%. Thousands of members, few soldiers. Few that if adversity stands, come now, they can still stand. I, I'm, I have a lot to teach on this subject matter. I'm going to, I'm going to write it up here. Hallelujah. Don't give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. When you wake up early in the morning of your life, the morning phase of your life, it is the phase to know God better, the phase to build solid foundation, the phase to lay foundation for all aspects, your relationship with God, relationship your, with finance, all those things, the stage to get the coordinations of your life to understand where you are going. Begin to build road maps along that path. It is not a stake to seek for women. And these are the things that people don't like when a pastor tells them. Somebody saying, pastor, I like this. The pastor knows. Oh God, from what I'm seeing here, in the next five years, you are not even ready. Sit down and face your destiny. Then they go. They jump pastor. Then go to one of their street pastors and say, I've carried this one so along. Are you seeing craftiness? Let me say this to you. 
You are seated here in this meeting. You are listening to me. Your heart is already beat. You know you are in trouble. You are battling a lot. All these things we are teaching, they are even small compared to the ones you have carried. My brother, when we call prayer, don't package. Pray. What did I say? Pray. Ah. Pray. I want to give everybody in this meeting the next 10 minutes. We are going to rise to our feet and we will cry to God. We will cry to God. I don't want to be a victim of what has been mentioned tonight. Help my emotions, help my life, help my coordination. You have heard these things. I know something is born in your heart. Cry to God. Help me, Jesus. Shege brumbo kuvala teke la pisto. Shele maka. Happy Brahmi, a sanctuary. You're the Lord, tried and true, we thank you, and we are you are When there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom, the kingdom is here. I lay down my offering to carry your new fire today. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came in with nothing. But all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to do. I came here with nothing. And all you have given me, Jesus, bring me one out of me. Soon I'm yes, God or not. Soon I'm yes, pay my corner. Soon I'm yes, Nasaranadi. Soon and yes, man, Turkey. Soon and yes, God of Nine. Soon and yes, they my call. Soon and yes, Nasser and I. Soon and yes, man, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and the same. He gave it to us as inheritance, so that we can make warfare with Him. Soon and yes, God will not. Soon and yes, they my corner. Soon and yes, Nasser and Ali. Soon and yes, Turkey. 
In Jesus mighty name we are praying. Let me say this to you. There is no weakness that is plaguing an individual that can't be helped. Because as long as the righteous will run into the name of Christ, they get saved. Give us this scripture. Message translation. Romans 6 verse 16. Give us that scripture. Romans 6 verse 16. Romans 6 verse 16. Look at it. Okay, give us. Let me first read. Okay. Okay. Don't worry. Leave it like this. Okay. Is there, what word is there? Adli. You know well enough from your own experience that there are some hearts of so-called freedom that destroy freedom. Offer yourselves to sin. To sin, for instance. And it is what? Your last free act. But offer yourselves to the ways of God. And the freedom never quit. All your lives, you have let sin tell you what to do. Let me show you another scripture. Galatians 5 verse 19, message translation. Galatians 5 19, message translation. Now look at it. It is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. This is the kind of life that develops from trying to get your way. What is it? Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex. A stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage. Huh? Crazy and loveless grabs for your happiness. Are you seeing that? Look at it. Repetitive, loveless. People are having loveless sex. Just lustful. Repetitive, love. That's why I'm saying this again. Somebody is in, you are here. You are listening to me. Because the devil can stand even now with an anointing in your heart. Because he has an anointing. Though corrupted. I'm telling that, you see, when pastor is saying that those who need help should reach out. Not for somebody like you. Because you are already healed. It's just last month. That's, that's trouble. Somebody is about to enter that. I just described an instance now. No, no, no. So it's more like you. I know. The devil will tell you that I'd rather die than open up. Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex. A stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage. I don't know Christians are with so much garbage. They've had so much dangerous thoughts from different countries. And this is God trying to bring you out. Are you following what I'm saying? Here? This is God trying to do what? To bring you out. Glory to God. I pray for you in the name that is above all names. You will not miss the mark. You will not use your own heart to destroy your life. The mistakes you hate so much that you have criticized in others, you will not be the one that will repeat it. Your case will be entirely different. You are helped in the name of Jesus. And it is done. In Jesus' powerful name, we are prayed. Hallelujah. True transformation is evident for doers and not just hearers of the world. Be a doer of this world of transformation. <laughs>